So I have to say that when I chose the topic for this morning's sermon, I wasn't sure if I'd get much of a turnout. I'm talking about conversion today, and conversion or being converted isn't something we talk much about in Unitarian Universalism. And when we do, it's usually to point out that we're, to point out what we're not or what we don't do, rather than who we are or how we journey, choose to journey together. So let me just begin by asking you all a question. How many of you who have consider yourselves to be Unitarian Universalists or who attend this congregation regularly have ever described UU or UUCville as a place where no one is going to try and convert you? Anybody ever said that before? A few, yeah. So let me just say that if you've characterized Unitarian Universalism or this congregation as a religion or a community that doesn't seek to convert people, you are, for the most part, correct. Or at least you're correct if you are using a, what I would call a very traditional definition of the word conversion. But I want to make the case this morning that we Unitarian Universalists are guided by what I think is a very different understanding of what it means to be converted and to have faith, and that we do indeed seek to convert those who choose to make their spiritual journeys with us. So I think it would be fair to say that the traditional understanding of what it means to convert or to undergo conversion can be found in at least some of the world's major religions. In simplest terms, to be converted or to, ex to accept or come to believe in a creed or faith statement. That's generally how we understand conversion. So, for example, being converted, let's just say, in Christianity means believing or having faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died to atone for humanity's sins, and that he was resurrected on Easter morning, and that those who believe or have faith in these things will experience eternal life. If you use this kind of definition of conversion, it seems pretty darn impossible to be converted in Unitarian Universalism. As many of you are undoubtedly aware, we don't have a creed or a doctrine that you are required or expected to believe in. In fact, we don't have a single understanding of ultimate reality or a test of faith that one must pass in order to be welcomed and accepted. Instead, we, we Unitarian Universalists come together around a set of values and principles about how we want to journey with one another and in the world. Most of those values can be found in our current seven principles or in the proposed Article II revision of our principles that will be voted on in June. But it's important to point out that while these values and principles help define and affirm the way we aspire to live in the world, they are most assuredly not a creed that one must believe in in order to be saved, accepted, or welcomed in this or any Unitarian Universalist community. So if Unitarian Universalism doesn't have a single final or absolute truth, what exactly do we mean by conversion? Well, the word convert comes from a Latin verb, which simply means to turn around, to change, or to be transformed. So conversion in a religious or spiritual sense is about changing or being transformed from one thing to another. From one way of understanding ourselves in the world to another. Of course, that new way of understanding may involve a creed or doctrine. It may involve believing in a god or the gods. But I want to make the case today that it doesn't have to. And then when it comes to conversion, Unitarian Universalism takes a very, very different approach. And if we use a definition of conversion that simply means transformation from one way of understanding ourselves and the world to another, then Unitarian Universalism is most assuredly a religion 
that seeks to convert those who journey through our doors or join us online. But rather than seeking to convert you to a creed or dogma, Unitarian Universalism begins with each and every one of you, with who you are, where you come from, and what you love. While a creed is the, is the test of faith of many other religions that one is required to pass in order to be saved or accepted, Unitarian Universalism seeks above all else to invite and inspire you to be your authentic self, to believe those things that touch your heart and stir your soul and to live in a way that brings joy and hope to your life and to the, way, and to the lives of others. That's what it means to be converted in Unitarian Universalism. Now, in order to make our approach to conversion a little clearer, let me just give you a little background. Now, before they came together as one religion in 1961, Universalism and Unitarianism were two distinct faith traditions. The Universalist side emerged in the late 1700s and was a reaction to Calvinism and its vision of a harsh, judgmental God and a depraved, sinful humanity. In contrast, the Universalist affirmed a God of boundless and unconditional love who saves all souls and who views all of humankind as the children of God. This universalist God did not require that one believe in a creed about who he or what he demands. Rather, the God of universalism loves and accepts people where they are, no matter what they believe, no matter what sins they may have committed, or even what religion they belong to. While other faith traditions offered conditional love and salvation for some, Universalism simply proclaimed, whoever you are, wherever you have come from, you are loved and welcomed by God. Now, while the Universalists stressed this unconditional love and welcome for all, the Unitarian side of our tradition affirmed the importance of freedom, authenticity, and growth. Think for a moment about our famous Unitarian forebears, the Transcendentalists, you know, people like Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau and Margaret Fuller and so on. These folks taught us that life at its best is lived from a place of honesty, integrity, and authenticity. They urged us to listen, to explore, and to develop our own truths and our own answers rather than simply conforming to the creeds and conventions of religion or society. As Emerson once said, the gift of God to the soul is not a vaunting, overpowering, excluding sanctity that is found in many of our churches and our pulpits, but rather a sweet, natural goodness that invites you and I to be and to grow. A sweet, natural goodness that invites us to be and to grow. Now, I know it may sound strange to speak of conversion as being converted to who you are and to finding your true or authentic self. I mean, don't we already accept and believe in ourselves? Who else can I be if not myself? Well, as Emerson and others pointed out, and as far too many of us still experience today, our authentic selves are not always who it is safe or acceptable or welcome for us to be. Think for a moment about all the voices and all the messages telling people that who they are isn't good enough, that who you are is a failure or a disappointment, and that we are going to be punished for not being who God or some earthly spiritual authority thinks we should be. Whether these voices are coming from our friends or adversaries, from culture or society, or from religion or a church, far too many people find themselves weighed down 
by a terrible burden of judgment that tells them that they aren't good enough or acceptable enough to be loved. So what happens? What are the consequences? How do people so often cope with a world that is quick to judge and prone to reject people based on who they are, what they believe, where they come from, or who they love? We cope so often by living from a place of fear and by hiding or burying our true self and creating in its place a false self. And while this false self may gain us some level of acceptance from the voices of judgment and exclusion, it does so at a terrible, terrible cost. While we pretend to be something or someone we're not, our true self, our authentic self, is driven into hiding and can remain there, I'm sorry to say, for years and sometimes even a lifetime. In Unitarian Universalism, who you are is beautiful, sacred, a blessing, and really cool. We celebrate and cherish the song that is uniquely your own, and we invite and encourage you to listen for and sing that song. We welcome and accept you for the person you are, not the person anyone else or any religion thinks you have to be. Our invitation every Sunday morning is to come as you are and to bring your whole self into this religious tradition and into this community. We want you, we need you to bring your questions and your answers, your beliefs and your doubts, your joys and your sorrows, your successes and your failures, your wholeness and your broken places. You don't have to wear a mask or hide any part of yourself in this faith tradition or in this congregation. We love you for you, not for who anyone says you ought to be. And it is that clear and uncompromising acceptance and celebration of our true and authentic selves that is at the heart of what it means to be a Unitarian Universalist and to be converted to Unitarian Universalism. As, as strange as it may sound, being converted to this religion is about having faith in yourself and responding and celebrating your own worth and dignity. Being converted in Unitarian Universalism is about listening for and acting on the stirrings of your own heart and following your passion and your dreams. Being converted in Unitarian Universalism is about welcoming and celebrating the person you are and the person you yearn to become. I have to say that one of my favorite things as a Unitarian Universalist minister is um, the Sundays when we have the opportunity to hear from members of our congregation from a pulpit like this one share their stories. Think about the coming of age service that we have whenever we have a coming of age class. And some of those young people will stand up here and share what's called their credos, their statements of belief that are coming from their heart, from their mind, and from their own experiences. And I think they do this because it's safe. It's a judgment-free place. It's a place where as I oftentimes tell the youth when they're a little nervous about speaking, I say, hey, you know what? These are your people. They love you. They're going to cheer for you and hug you. You don't need to be eloquent. You they don't necessarily even need to agree with you. They just love you for who you are. Mm -hmm. And every time I experience a service like that, when I'm oftentimes sit, maybe even sitting out in the pews, I just say to myself, this right here, people being able to stand in a pulpit and say who they are and what's in their heart. That is Unitarian Universalism at its absolute best. Now, while we use place ultimate value on individual freedom and authenticity, 
we do recognize, as Manisha's reading indicated, that life at its best is life lived with others and in community. We find truth and wisdom in each other's lives and strength and comfort in each other's company. We understand that the most meaningful journey one can make is the shared journey, a journey rooted in love, acceptance, and respect. We are so closely connected. We are interwoven with one another. We are tied, as Dr. King famously said, in a single garment of destiny. So we journey together, loving one another, caring for one another, listening to one another, and learning from one another. We find meaning and in our stories and in our experiences, in our joys and our sorrows, in our hopes and in our dreams. While individual freedom of conscience and belief will always, in my view, be at the heart of Unitarian Universalism, we find the greatest joy and meaning when we are free together, following the light of love, compassion, and friendship. But it's important to remember that Unitarian Universalism's commitment to others doesn't end at the walls of this or any UU congregation. We affirm the dignity and worth of every person, and we believe passionately that the love, compassion, and acceptance we offer to ourselves, we believe passionately that is the birthright of the whole human family. So we take our values and our principles out into the world through deeds of love and service as we strive together to make the world more just and more peaceful. So let me conclude by saying that in Unitarian Universalism, conversion is a complicated, complex idea. I'm guessing it isn't likely to become a common way to speak about our faith or part of your elevator speech. Um, we'll probably continue describing ourselves as a religion that doesn't seek to convert or impose on others. But I, for one, am going to try to find ways of talking more positively about conversion, what it means to be a Unitarian Universalist. I know, I know, I would be drawn to a religion that welcomes and celebrates people for who they are, rather than condemning them for who they are not. And I would certainly be drawn to a religion that not only celebrates me and my journey, but at the same time seeks to take me beyond my own needs and concerns to the needs and concerns of others. Loving and accepting myself, loving and accepting others. That's the vision. Those are the values Unitarian Universalism seeks to affirm and promote. I don't know if sharing our vision and our values will convert people or convince them to join our faith. And maybe that's not really the point. Perhaps our core mission is not to double or triple the number of Unitarian Universalists in the world, although I'm not against that, I think that'd be great. But rather, maybe our core mission is to share a vision of life that is free from fear, free from the judgment and the exclusion that does so much harm. Perhaps our job is to let people know that no matter who they are or where they come from, there are people in this world who love and welcome them. And perhaps our most important calling is to affirm in everything that we do that for all of the many challenges and struggles in our world, we, we are ultimately one human family journeying together on this marvelous planet that is our home. Amen, and thank you so much for listening. <laughs>